almost 400 pages of Lynette's lies given to Levy County Court. You know, nothing makes me feel better than debunking. It makes me feel so good. Three hundred and sixty-eight pages, and more if you actually count, which Judge Craig De Thomasus threw all out. But I gotta debunk. I mean, it's just—it's what I do. Remember when she told the judge she only has Facebook pages to debunk all my lies? Well. Let's take a look at Lynette's lies. Her mother named her appropriately. So this is the first couple pages of her lies in the very beginning. Now we can see right here, filed Levy County Court October 30th at 2023 at 1.52 p.m. Keep in mind, I had just already gotten, just gotten into Levy County, okay? And on this she says, She's filing for a stalking order right here. We can see that. We can see her real name is Lynette M.L.A. Preston, which keep in mind, the Michelle, I don't know if that's real or not. The Lacey and Alexis, she gave herself those own names. Those are not legal names. She gave them to herself amongst many other things. So she goes to say, see all evidence and attach statements and all of these things are happening now for over a year. All right, now let's let's just pause for a second, okay? So she says all of these things are happening to her for over a year. And she's going to give all of this evidence, which I have some of her evidence, which Craig DeThomasis, as horrible as he is, actually said wasn't evidence and threw it out of the entire system. But remember when Crook said all of this was about him filing an ethics report or violations on Madam Mayor Teresa? He named me in four. Okay, so he did that during the summer. That's way, way less. I mean, that's less than six Hello. months. Yes, Pepper, I know, sweetie. We got Pepper working. There you go. Pepper working with Daddy again. Tag team. Okay, and so way less than six months as it is already, even though she says it's been going on for over a year. Now, keep in mind, she says that also in the court system, it's October when she puts this in, she says this all started because she was running for a position in the town of Otter Creek. But, and she's also said, this all started because George told her to throw her baby away, which never happened. And then she goes on to say, it all started because she said she wasn't going to be at our half mill time to grill event, which is March. And March. And March. I know. I know. Lynette's a liar. You know it. I know it, Pepper. So how in the world could this be happening for over a year if Crook says it started in the summer and then she says it started constantly with three different narratives and stories that it started in the spring. But somehow she's filing on October 30th, 2023, as I just enter back into Levy County. How's this make any sense whatsoever? All of this is happening now for over a year and is daily, including something us followed us posting where we are now i'm posting where she is except hold a second this is the woman that literally is watching my live streams where i say i'm going to the sheriff's office first thing when i get into levy county and stalks me there and then is found in contempt of court for breaking and violating the civil protection order for being there but she's trying to tell the florida courts that i'm posting where she's at Oh, and I'm doing hate crimes, and I'm telling 600,000 people that they're what they're doing to him. And she says, we are not. Well, let's correct that. It's not 600,000 people. Now, as much as I would enjoy 600,000 people watching these videos, that doesn't happen. As a matter of fact, my most viewed videos are storage unit videos. And if we get 100,000, if we get 150,000, we're lucky on these videos. And it's all different peoples from all different aspects of the planet. These are the least viewed videos on the channel, but they are there for accountability. They are there for an accurate record of what has happened to us in our life as we continue to debunk the stalkers on a daily basis. And Lynette says to the court, I want to take a polygraph. 
Why does this woman constantly say I want to take a polygraph? She's obviously a pathological habitual liar. We've seen it over and over and over again. I have all the proof, all the evidence right there. So why in the world would she even say she wants to take a polygraph? Well, let's break that down a little bit. Number one, a polygraph can't be used in court as evidence. So it's useless. A polygraph means absolutely nothing. Now, when people have actually told her, oh yeah, okay, let's take a polygraph. I'll pay for it. Then she goes on to say, I picked the questions. All right, so what's the point in taking a polygraph if you're going to pick the questions that you don't want to lie about and you are going to lie about? That, that makes no sense whatsoever. Okay. And she goes on to say that I can prove I'm not doing anything to him or George. I'm not doing anything except a court in Ohio already proved that she was doing things and continues to do things, as a matter of fact. She just broke the civil protection order again. Now, this is the funniest part, okay? We've got all of this information. And remember, all she does is imitate. All she does is mimic. And you hear that, that it's the most sincere form of flattery. Intimi it, it, it's, not, it's not flattering to me at all. It's not. All right. I don't I don't like it at all. And in the Ohio courts, George gave testimony that she was in counseling because of all this and she's still in counseling. So then Lynette went on to go, oh, I am just now starting counseling. So what did Lynette do again? So often imitated and yet the original is in the court evidence and book. So she went on again to imitate. To try, she's gone as far as trying to look like George, not only trying to talk like George in these documents. Remember, this is all after Ohio court. So she then says, now I'm going to counseling due to this and the, and the well, the abuse. Now, that's funny because she says it's this type of abuse that's happening. But she's also put in all these documents that Crook is an abuser of her. And yet we've seen absolutely nothing, not a thing in writing that she was going, no, exactly, exactly, Pepper say, no, nothing. She was just shaking her head back and forth. She was going, no, 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 go nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. She's, she's not uh, doing now anything. she doesn't want to do it. She's going crazy. She's like, ah! okay. We've seen nothing. She hasn't gone to any counseling because of crook. Now she's doing it again. And now she's stopping again. Oh my goodness, you little silly pickle. All right. And now I guarantee you she's going to start again. Okay. I think what she's doing is she's looking at herself and she's doing it again. She's yeah. looking at herself in the camera with Christian and she's watching herself bob back and forth. Okay. So the funniest part is, is she's stating just like George, that she's in counseling now. And she's stating it's because of the abuse. And yet she's never gone to any counseling for any abuse of Crook, even though she's publicly stated for years that he's doing these things to her. Now, if I'm a judge, I'm going to find that a little odd. And here's the most concerning thing. If we look at this page right here, I understand that I'm swearing and affirming under the oath that the truthfulness of the claims made in this supplemental affidavit, that the punishment of knowingly making a false statement includes fines and or imprisonment. And it's dated 11 November 30th, 2023. And she signs it. Now, that's interesting because that's page three, and this says it's actually filed on October 30th, 2023, but she signs it on November 30th, 2023. So, first of all, I'm not even sure what date is the correct date. Second of all, I can find so many lies in this that there should be. And I hope there is a tremendous amount of fines and imprisonment. This is some pretty funny stuff right here. This is called supplemental paper uh, document 
affidavit that she files to the judge. Now, this is pretty, pretty funny, okay? I'm going to read some of it to you. It says, Dear Judge, I'm writing and entering in the supplemental report. Okay, she calls it a report, not an affidavit. To ask, please give me an ex parte temporary order of protection while we wait to get a court date to make it permanent against Jeremy Hales. Oh, oh, oh. And George. And then she goes on to say, this is insanity. She goes on to say, they are inciting a riot. Okay, right there. She says this to the judge. They are inciting a riot. Well, last I've known, the only time I've ever had any groups come together in Otter Creek or Florida as a whole was half mill time to grill, and everybody was completely and totally respectful. As a matter of fact, I had Levy County Sheriff there providing security, both uniformed, ununiformed, and evacuation plan for all YouTubers if there was any rioting or anything that shouldn't have been there, such as my stalking neighbors. So there's that incident, no rioting. Oh, there was that, that, there was that community garage sale uh, for Otter Creek residents, and I wasn't even there. And guess what happened? A whole bunch of great people came together. They sold a lot of their stuff. They made money, and everybody was happy, and they had a good time. Okay, there was that. Oh, wait, 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 hold a second. Um, this happened after this was written, but there was that Christmas in the Creek event, and there were thousands of people, and Florida residents, and people from around the planet that came together, and guess what happened? Um, they rioted for Santa and Mrs. Claus? No, no, they loved Santa and Mrs. Claus. Did anybody ever riot? I've yet to ever see anybody riot on my behalf or because I incited a riot. I mean, she literally states, I am inciting a riot. Oh, look at this. And I took down my private group. Let's figure out why she took down her private group. All right, so she goes on to say, he's making up his own stories now because I followed the advice of Deputy Tochao and took down my private group so his moles could no longer steal my content and change it to fix their hate and anger, etc. Oh boy, the whole Lynet story just... Oh, there you are, sweetheart. There you are. I'll tell you more about Lynet, okay? All right, she loves a good, she loves a good story with a villain. And a hero. And so, uh, Pepper right now, she's hearing about the villain, but don't worry, the hero is coming. So she goes on to say she took down her private group, so his moles. Now, I love moles. I, I used to love turtles. Uh, honestly, I love beavers and turtles and moles and, and baby deer and peacocks and chickens and ducks. And I like all of God's creation. Uh, but there are some people that make it very difficult to like them. And so an individual such as herself who took down her private group, okay, as she states that I'm inciting some type of riot. Uh, okay, all right, well, let's see what else it has to say here. And she goes on to say, I'm just reading some of the highlighted areas here because this is a lot of information. And so she goes on to say, that, let's see, she says, I've never gotten money from any woman in a battered woman's shelter. I've never been to one, and I've never been to one. That's odd. She says she's literally never been to a battered woman's shelter, but she says John Crook is abusing her on a daily basis. Okay, well, now we got more evidence against her. I've never gotten money from any woman, and this is the craziest part. And I've never been to one. I'm not getting big cats. The governor is not giving us the grant. So she was stating that the governor was giving her a grant to get big cats. <laughs> uh, they, they've also stated under oath in court that the governor is now involved in children's services coming out and family services. And, and that he has made sure that they are clean and clear. That nothing will happen. The governor is now involved on that. Which is a lie. The governor has nothing to do with that. Okay. And she goes on to say, uh, not one word he has posted in that fake post is real. Not one, but the cyber stalking and the cyber bullying and stalking and cyber. 
she just repeats the same thing like five times in a row. Okay, and then we get to the highlighted. Law wasn't written for me. I don't know who it was written for. She's literally saying if the laws weren't written for her, she doesn't know who they were written for. They are for her and only her. Except at this point, as she's writing this, she's already been found guilty. They were written, written for everyone. And she's been found guilty in the court system. And at this point in time, as I'm filming this, she's already been found guilty of violating. And as I'm filming this, there's going to be another court case where she'll be found guilty yet again for violating. Three more violations are coming her way. Okay, and then she goes on to say, when YouTubers do that, they're saying, make a call. Uh, I'm pretty sure when YouTubers say, don't contact anybody, they mean don't contact anybody. She literally, this is how psychotic she is. She says, they did a SWAT on us. A SWAT, okay. Oh my goodness. As if Levy County even has the manpower to do a SWAT. Now, some individuals will probably understand what internet swatting is, and some may not, okay? And it's not like spanking a bad individual or a good individual in the privacy of your own home. But this swatting is when you call the police, and then you have the police, and typically what you're calling in is some type of threat, and then the it's usually, um, you know, I'm the bomb.com, right? And so it's that thing. Threat. And what happens is the entire SWAT team comes, which Levy County doesn't exactly have. One officer on their property is not a SWAT. And the officers are on their property on a daily basis. So is she being SWATed every day? Or is she wishing she was SWATed by Crook every day? I mean, there's really no way to actually know or to say. I mean, the insanity that literally comes out of her mouth. But the funniest part is, in all of this insanity, and, and, and we could go through more, but she's saying I incited a riot. She's saying she got swatted by me. She's saying all the laws only apply to her, even though she's already been found guilty in the state of Ohio. But here's what's going on here. Literally, people are saying, do not contact Lynette or Crook, or even the Levy County Sheriff on behalf of Jeremy and George. As we've said so many times, do not contact. So Melissa right here in a in a in a groups here says, do not contact Levy County Sheriff on behalf of George or Jeremy. They have it under control. And that is very true. We have it completely and totally under control in the court system. But do you understand what Lynette did? Lynette said he wants everybody to contact us. And then Lynette gives the judge this. They're posting, don't contact anyone. Can we just say it together? Debunked. It makes me feel good. Now, here's one of the funniest things that she sent the judge. She thinks she's being followed. Why? Because she's psychotic. Why? Because, check this out. First, we're going we're gonna to read this one down here, right here. This is Lynette telling Shart, we need on 8723, we need to send that one to the deputy that they are having me followed by a private eye. How else would they know that we got French fries the other day when we went to Dairy Queen? Okay, let's figure out how in the world did I know she got French fries? Oh, now let's look up here. August 3rd, Lynette Michelle Preston. So, to go away from the other crap we deal with every day, good news. Well, hopefully, I do miss Church's chicken. I have to say I miss them. I love their chicken. But Dairy Queen is now open in Chiefland. I will try a burger, and I will give the baby some fries. Jeez. Yeah, you better contact the deputy. How in the world would Jeremy know they were at Dairy Queen Four days later, after she posted four days before that she was eating fries at Dairy Queen. Debunked. Is everybody wondering what I'm wondering? How do you put fries through a feeding tube? This is a text message to her daughter. 
well, her daughter doesn't claim her, and apparently she doesn't claim her daughter anymore. And you can see specifically in the text message, she says, how about this? I will find a home for the child, and I will just unalive myself. That way I can pay for what happened to you. It goes on to say, don't know, don't go to jail, and I will unalive myself. Me, I will rug myself to death. Do what I don't. Listen, you, you can see what the issue is here. She is a narcissist, and when a narcissist does not get their way, typically what they will do is manipulate to try and get their way. And one of the things they will do, this is standard for narcissism, is they will talk about unaliving themselves for the sympathy of others to get what they want in manipulation. And this is exactly what Lynette is doing. You can see it here highlighted, here highlighted, here highlighted. Three times in the same message. Now, I've got many more messages along the same context, but three times she says she's going to unalive herself. And yes, her daughters will be giving testimony against her in federal court and local county court. Now, here's what's really interesting about this text message, that her daughter will be authenticating, her daughter will be giving testimony against her in court. Because she goes on to tell the judge this. Check this out in the highlighting. I have never spoken to anyone about hurting myself. Oh my goodness, debunking feels good. Okay, let me try this again. Okay, this is an authenticated text message to her daughter in three times in one message. Now, there's many more. Three times in one message. She says she's going to... And then she tells the judge... I have never spoken to anyone about hurting myself. No, nope. I can't leave my home. I can't walk down the road. Sincerely, Lynette. Do I hear patience? Yes. Is patience behind us? Whoa, patience is behind us. And, and Baby Pepper, her nighttime story just put her to sleep. So we obviously, we understand that Lynette is true to her name. She's a pathological liar. So I find this extremely interesting that she has all these conversations that she somehow forgets about. And now, does she truly forget about them? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. She knows exactly what she said. She knows exactly what she's done. And she knows she's caught in all of her lies. So let's just go on and read just a little bit of this portion here, which is sent to the judge where she says, no, 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 I've never done any of this. She goes, I'm begging the court to grant me a temp order. Here she is begging again. Oh my goodness. A temp order of protection until we can get our court and further prove my case. I cannot leave my home. Except she continues to leave her home. She's flicked us off at Walmart. She's yelled at George on the road, which she's going to court for. She was at the town hall meeting for an hour and a half. She literally, she is so stupid. She files a motion asking Judge Craig to Thomas's to give her legal advice of whether she can run for town council in Otter Creek. That's how dumb she is when she's posting she can't leave her home. Right? Okay, I can't leave my home. I can't walk down the road. Except she was just walking down the road two town hall meetings ago telling everybody it was canceled because she had insider information from Russ Vassas who illegally was communicating this with her. All right. And she wants to push her in the stroller. She wants to push the child in the stroller because of the number of vehicles that are now going down our road. Once empty road. That's hilarious because Crook and her just put up a sign. A turd purgatory sign. Uh, it was her that posted that she wanted to put signs at the corner and sell all of her fresh eggs. It was her that wanted money from all my fans. It was her that told the judge that she thought it was the best investment ever because she watched videos, knew my plans, and she had to overpay for that property because property prices were going to skyrocket because I was there. And that was all her debunking yet again. Okay, and then she goes on to say... Uh, the, the, the once empty road, the video, they videotape me every day. And Mr. Hales has ordered them to video me every day. How can I order anybody? A judge has ordered her to stop all communication and stay 500 feet away. And she doesn't do it. That is a judgment order. Literally in the paperwork. Ordered. 
Jeremy Hales can't order anybody to do anything. All things are done based on free will and wanting to do those things. Nor have I ever told anybody to film them, to do anything to them. What I have said is stay away, be respectful, and... Nobody can stop anybody from driving down a public road, especially Judge Craig DeThomas is trying to stop me from driving down my road. Okay, let's see what else she says. She sends them there every day. He sends them there. Who in the world am I sending as I'm trying to hide myself from followers and fans? Uh, and so now I'm sending people? Interesting. Okay. All right. And I'm begging for this protection order. Someone's going to end up unalive. Hmm. I wonder who it might be as they're telling their daughter they will unalive themselves. Okay. Yeah. This is just complete and total nonsense. All right. Oh, then she files another document with the judge. I, again, I could read all of this. It's, it's, it's a lot to cover and it's just complete and total nonsense. But it goes on, Dear Judge, I had to add a second thing. Jeremy started a case in Ohio which he had closed, which I have enclosed against us on the 24th of September, knowing that we had already filed against him here in Florida on the 13th of September. In that court hearing, he perjured himself over and over again, and I wanted to make it very clear that he will not stop until my child has been removed from his, delu from his delusional crimes we've committed in his mind. Oh, the crimes that the Ohio courts found them guilty of? I'm so delusional. Hmm. Okay, and I've left my... Pr and I left my property in Otter Creek. I hope you look at all my evidence, and if you could just watch the video on what the... You can't even spell my name right on what the hails from last night, going to the police about the bad neighbors. You'll see for yourself what we're talking about. Otherwise, all I can do is give you paperwork, let you look at it, and then decide if you can give me the temporary order of production. She can't even spell. This is so ridiculous. We need protected. Mr. Hales is very clear. He will not stop. This law wasn't written to protect me. Then what was it written for to protect what is it supposed to do? This law is perfectly set to protect me from what Jeremy Hales and George are doing to us. It says all, oh, everything, what he's doing continually to the emotional abuse and cyberbullying. But it's inciting hate crimes against us and no one will give it to me. No inciting hate crimes against us and cannot happen. Somebody's going to get hurt or unalive. Please, please, your honor, help us. And then, sincerely, why not? Just like that. Sincerely. No postscript this time. But we have a whole lot more ridiculousness sent to the judge. I mean, it's page after page. Typed ones, handwritten ones. Your Honor, after further watching these dark videos, I had to add this to you. By the way, this is 9723. After watching my dark, dark videos. Uh, okay, the hate. The total hate coming from this man towards me is terrifying. I'm literally afraid this man is going to unalive me. That's funny because I've yet to ever point a firearm or even post that um, I'm carrying a firearm and yet these two are constantly doing it. Okay, they're going to get my child. I can't explain what I felt listening to him or these videos I thought his regular videos were bad, but they don't even compare. She's talking about member videos. There was somebody who was paying for a membership and gave him access to my membership videos, which there is nothing dark about my membership videos at all. As a matter of fact, most of them are incredible. Uh, and some of them, nope, none of them are dark. I was trying to think, did I do any in the evening? And I don't think a single one. None of them are dark. None of them. They're fun. As a matter of fact, if you're not a member, consider it. There's three tiers. The first tier, you get emojis, even a baby pepper. There's a baby pepper emoji. And it looks just like... That, except she's awake. And there's a Christian emoji, and it looks just like, boink, <laughs> except she's smiling bigger. And the second tier, you get an extra live stream, which Christian and Patience and Pepper just did that live stream for this week. And then at the top tier, you get an extra video. And remember, it's always free for regular YouTube viewing. It's just like buying a sweatshirt. Some people want a What the Hell sweatshirt or a t-shirt, and some people say, I don't, and that's okay. But there's some extra perks if you want them. And she goes on to say, Jeremy is inciting so much hate towards me. 
to his fans, now my baby's family, that I'm afraid of them as well. So now she's not only afraid of me, she's afraid of the child's biological family. She's telling the judge this. They will do anything. They look for him to please him. That's funny. That's funny because I would think that anybody who would do anything to please somebody would be for somebody who's doing wrong, which would be Lynette. Somebody, Patty, giving seven grand to somebody who is a pathological, habitual liar, a manipulator, destroyer of people's lives. And Patty would do anything to please Lynette. How about Paul? Paul giving three grand. Cameras. Do anything just to get one dance from Lynette. Anything to please Lynette. That's disgusting. That's concerning. Because all the evidence is there. And she goes on to cry. Please, please help me. Please help me. Well, a judge did help. A judge told her to stay away and stop. And what did she do? She continues to incriminate herself. All right, we got more. Oh, there's so much more. Okay, things were brought to my attention tonight. They're very serious. Jeremy Hales has a subscriber video. All right, I'm not even going to get to that. All right, here we go. Hi, Pepper. She just woke up. She's, getting, she's like, this is the good stuff. All right, right here it says, The Grandmother. And it goes on and on and on. Okay, so... What's happening in this portion that she wrote to the judge is she's telling the judge or she's claiming to be a victim to the judge of the child's biological grandmother. And she goes on to say the grandmother, we cut her out a long time ago because, let me see if I can find it. This is a person, da, 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 da. Okay. I'm just going to have to read the whole thing. So George highlighted these things, and I, I honestly, I can't follow her line of thought on some of these things, so I have to read the whole thing. So she sent them to me and said, hey, talk about this. Uh, so it goes, never took the baby's medical issue seriously, brought the siblings over while they were sick and while knowing it could unalive her. We cut her off a long time ago. Her drunken texts and phone calls to me. Okay, so right here she's saying the biological grandmother's we cut her off a long time ago for the drunken texts and phone calls to me. Okay, so I'm not even going to any further there. You see what she says about the child's biological grandmother, right? Okay, Michelle Preston, Lynette, 3, March 6, 2023, right here. Okay, and what do we have? This is a text message from Lynette. And it says this, so I was just told by John that you guys are telling him I need to solve this communication between you and Brett. This is to Madam Mayor Therese. And I, and I, well, I didn't come over to my house and accuse me of, this is just sick. You can see this, accuse me of ducking Vice Mayor Zim, who is now our mayor. And ducking Zim, I didn't come over to my house and accuse me of sending him love hearts off of a stupid Valentine's background. I didn't come here to cut down my stamps, my clothing, my glasses, my personality, me. I didn't do that, but all you have each other, all yawn. This is, I, you can't even understand this garbage. You all can have each other, yawn. You got John Cook. Congratulations. So now you can have the rug dealer, the filthy wrong okay so what she wants to tell the judge is we cut the biological grandmothers out of her life because she's a runk and what does she tell anybody and everybody who will listen to her because she wants to play this victim and she wants sympathy from her that crook is a rug dealer and a runk so i don't know any better word that rhymes with runk than debunk Yet again, we're debunking, but it goes even further. It goes way further. So you've heard that little thing called a shark. You know, bacon strips in your backside. Well, there's a shark up in New Jersey, a really stanky, skanky shark. I mean, it's so filthy, you can't clean it with laundry detergent. And it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty concerning that shark, who claims to be the advocate of these individuals, has these things to say as well. So this is a conversation here, and this is what Shart is saying. And you can see Shart is right there, giving them the chance to save them. They completely turned on me. 
That's meaning crook and line net. She told me I can't come to Otter Creek, that she is going to sabotage my efforts for others. She said the biological grandmother is a runk, and that's why she took the baby away too. But she also told me that John is rinking a lot with his pain meds. Does not make any sense. And then this person says, OMG, Shart, you really need to call CPS. She's rugging that baby. The only reason she has her is for the money she gets. The child is locked up in that shed all day. The people who actually are supporting these psychotic individuals, those are the dangerous people. Those are the people that are not protecting a child, that are not protecting the true victims of all of this, and are supporting somebody who claims to be an ordained minister who used to dance on a pole and is slinging out the turtle soup for any fool to actually drink. Tortoise pens are way over there. There's the chicken coop. We have the new um, shower room where my little uh, composting toilet is at. We have our shed where the baby sleeps and plays. Our storage shed. You just heard from Lynette's own lips. The shed where the baby sleeps and stays. This is ridiculous. Look at the garbage. There's garbage everywhere. Here's the shed. Now, let's be extremely clear. There is no plumbing. There is no AC. There is nothing that a child with a supposed life-threatening condition should ever be living in. And you're going, how in the world could this keep going on? Not only that, the composting toilet? Oh yeah, that, that thing that she claimed is her outdoor bathroom. And then when she was called on about it with the health department, she claimed it's for scrubbing the tortoises and the turtles. Well, that composting toilet right here, as you can see, she's going in a bucket. And if you look here, carpet and carpet, this is the inside of the shed. And this is the hose and the funnel where she takes all the urine. And then that urine she places in this bottle and then puts it all over the property with a life-threatening conditioned child who's sleeping and playing with this, in this. This is insanity. Now, want proof? Okay, best proof always comes from Lynette herself. Right there, I'm pretty proud of myself for building it. Uh, yep. Yeah, I get it. It's gross. We all get it. She says alone. I'm building my outdoor shower alone. I love living a simple life. A simple life, huh? This is a horrific life that no child should actually be living in, especially when they're told on a daily basis that anything could unalive them. As a matter of fact, the same woman is going to the judge and saying that I stated that there's going to be unalive. She's telling the judge that I could unalive them, that my fans are going to unalive them, that everybody is going to unalive them. The only person that truly is at risk of being unalive, myself, George, but more importantly, this child. The complete and total neglect that this child is living in is insane to me absolutely insane. And, and, and yeah, I, I got all the proof. I mean, look, I got it from her. From her. How in the world could he know that we were at Dairy Queen eating fries? I don't know, because she's freaking stupid enough to announce it to the world, to say that a child can only eat through an eating tube, but now she's taking the child to go eat fries. Do you think there's a vacuum on that thing? It's like whoop, right up there and whoop, Right up there, and then, whoosh, wait, what if it's a chunky fry? What if it's like one of those bonus fries, the really big ones, and it's like, whoosh, 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 and it's stuck? She doesn't eat through a feeding tube. She eats like a normal child. That's how she eats, and that's how she should be raised, like a normal child, with normal social conditions with other children, and yet they take this child and don't let this child talk to anybody because they're scared of the 
consequences. It's the utter consequences for the conditions and the way this child is living and the way these two act and treat this child. No child, no child should ever live this way. What I find even more interesting is she goes on to write more crazy documents. And she says, tonight he announced, keep in mind, under oath, she said she's only watched three, maybe four of our videos, okay? Three, maybe four. Although, that's already all been debunked. She knows about our plans of expansion of the property, what we want to do in Otter Creek. She's already told the judge she thought it was the greatest investment ever because of it. She's already shown her cards over and over again that she's a pathological liar. And she goes, tonight he announced he's paying these people's legal fees to try and overturn the adoption. This is abuse, harassment, cyber, and stalking. Please help. No, it's not. It's a legal proceeding. That's exactly what it is. This has nothing to do with harassment, stalking, or anything else. It has everything to do with protecting a child. And my goals are still the same today as when I began. Number one, I want to protect a child. Number two, I want to protect the residents of Otter Creek. Children before adults. Adults after children. But people before animals. Because number three is all the animals. And the animals, even our own dogs, are trying to escape and get safe. Now, here's what I find extremely interesting. She provides all these videos as evidence in the court system. Now, let's just take a peek at some of these. Let's take a peek, all right? Two years ago, I can't even, can't even figure out what that's about. Shots fired by neighbors from H-A-L-E-S, okay? And this is about my rug addict neighbors shooting at individuals who are climbing the tower. Okay, what does that have to do with her? Her and Crook weren't even there yet. Not Nothing. Okay, what about this? Found gold and silver. I bought an abandoned storage unit. What does that have to do with Lina and Crook? Nothing. All right, how about this? So much abandoned luggage two years ago. Nothing about her or Crook. Nothing at all. Manager yelled at us. I bought an abandoned storage unit. What does that have to do with her and Crook? Nothing. Security officer after us at an at a abandoned storage unit. Nothing. Caught trespassers on our land. Wasn't her. It was actually a busted can of biscuit, boys. Caught on camera at schoolhouse. Has nothing to do with her. Three cops called on me at town hall meeting. Nothing to do with her. Bad neighbors trespass trespassing on my new property. That's Brian and Tina. Has nothing to do with her. She's having a baby. Oh my goodness. This is animals. Animals having a baby. Has nothing to do with Lynette or Crook. It's okay, baby. Oh, I know. I know she makes me upset, too. I know she does. She makes me upset, too. It's okay. It's okay, baby Pepper. We could go on and on. She's having a baby. We met our neighbor of our new property. This is a positive video talking about how our new neighbor is great at the schoolhouse. Neighbor warned us. Um, let's see what else we have. Evidence. A corrupt town stole from me. Has nothing to do with her. I mean, look at this. This is insanity. Page after page after page. Playing the high, high limit coin pusher. What does high limit coin pushers have to do with Lynette and Crook? And this is what she's sending. This is what she's sending the judge, which is why I go, please, please, please pay her lawyer to watch all of these videos, which only helps me grow. And then play them in court, please. It only proves my case. And here's more. And we got more pages and more. Here we go. Half mill time to grill. What is half mill time to grill? A live stream from half mill time to grill have anything to do with Lynette and Crook? Nothing. Okay, how about the schoolhouse update? Nothing. Florida ranch update? Nothing. Abandoned safe update? It's a safe. For God's sake, it's a safe. Has nothing to do with Lynette and Crook. Oh, we got an unhoarder. Okay. Oh, well, that's where my gate got crashed. Uh, and we've got to protect our property from bad neighbors. Huh, we are, what does George have to say? She said, oh, no, this is what Lynette said. We are the bad neighbors. So... So something this for, um, Lynette writes on here, we are the bad neighbors. So I have no idea, but in all reality, I don't, that video had nothing to do with them either. Yet again, everything has been debunked.